right here is the HP ProBook 4 50G7. It's pretty pro, but before I tell you more about it, I'll let you guys enjoy the unboxing. Welcome back to Furious Tech. As always, we bring you tech reviews, tips, and tutorials to help you live life smarter. And today, I'll be having a look at the HP ProBook 4 50G7. Very first impressions, the whole chassis is pretty much the same as the very popular HP J6 model. Part aluminium, part plastic, with a weight of 2 kg. Frankly, it's not that heavy really. Pretty thin, about 19 mm, so that's a good thing if portability is what you're looking for. One hand to open it up with a slight flex in the screen, it has a little too much of black border on top and bottom. On the top, you have a very average 720p webcam with privacy shutter, or in this sports IR face recognition for secure and quick logging in. Talking about secure logging options, this also has quick fingerprint. So you have now both the options at your disposal. This is good work, HP. Me and you, we all like to have more options, don't we? The whole deck feels clean, open, and spacious. You have these speakers on top. I'm gonna to talk about these a bit later. This is gonna be interesting, so just hang on there. All of this center area underneath this part of laptop is where the two heat pipes are running for heat dissipation that comes out from this vent right here. Then you have the power button just below it that lits up nicely when you turn it on. For the inputs, you get a full-size chiclet backlit keyboard, which I think would go perfectly for students and professionals overall. That's because it has a softer tactile feel with a decent key travel distance. Now this is a free DOS laptop, so right after installing Windows, the touchpad did not work for me. Attaching a USB mouse, I had it straight to the driver's website, to the HP driver's website, and installed the Intel Serial I.O. driver, Comet Lake. That had this whole touchpad driver thing sorted. It has that grainy feel. Like me, if you're a soft tap user, then this shouldn't bug you, but if you like to press the pad hard, then just listen to this one. It's kind of noisy. But it's placed at an adequate distance from keyboard and sports multi-touch gestures and gladly doesn't behave weirdly sweaty after a long time of usage. I actually quite like this chromish looking border. What do you think? So input out of the way. Let's talk about the screen. It's a 15.6 inch full HD IPS panel, 215 nits bright. I didn't notice any backlight bleeding on the screen that I have, gladly with decent viewing angles and a decent contrast and colors as well. Although the screen is good for everyday use, but I wouldn't recommend this to someone who is a pro color editor on Photoshop, Corel Draw, or someone who does a lot of video color grading, so to speak. So not the most color accurate screen, but it's definitely clear. The whole test readability is sharp and anyone reading data or text on it for longer hours won't face any eye strain. Ports almost all the useful ones. The freedom to just pick any old school paraffin and smash it in. Here we have an old USB 2.0 on the left side with an always needed SD card right here. The USB Type-C 3.1 with power delivery, display port, a conventional RJ45 Ethernet port, HDMI, and two USB Type-A 3.1 ports, and 3.5 audio jack as well. That's quite a lot of ports for anyone going and taking this laptop places. I teased you guys earlier about the speakers on this thing. I'll get back to that one. The speakers are really good on this thing. They don't have the boom bass sound maxed out, but these had one of the best sounds you can hear for even a movie experience on your laptop. Try to record an audio to give you a slight idea about the quality. Let's have a listen to this. <laughs> Show off. I could have just peed on it. Now let's talk a bit about the internals and the overall performance of this laptop. The one I have is the 10510U i7 processor. This thing is definitely a decent performer. It's a good multitasking laptop, can play you videos very well, can give you a little bit of editing as well as far as your full HD footage is concerned, a bit of 4K as well without the transitions, I would say. And even casual gaming with its MX130 video card is good. And no power connected running CSGO with default settings, lag free with decent frame rates. Even network users with network support tasks will find this machine a very good performer. But pushing processing intensive tasks for longer hours like 4K video editing or animation renders will let the performance down. 
Battery on this thing gave me roughly around five hours of usage on a light to medium use with the brightness set to 50%. Besides a 65 watt power adapter, you can also opt for a USB-C power adapter. For the upgrades, you can easily pry open this thing with about seven screws, most of which are attached to the bottom panel itself. The one slot which is there comes with the HGB RAM, which is already installed, and you have one available slot for RAM upgradation, and also a slot for you to add an extra M.2 NVMe in your laptop, in addition to the SATA hard disk that comes pre-installed. In my case, this one has a one terabyte conventional hard drive, which means getting an SSD drive in this laptop will have a better overall performance, faster boot times and whatnot. Now this do get hot from top after running a game or render for continuously 45 to 50 minutes, but the fans are not too loud and overall thermal management is stable with pretty good temperature control. Running Cinebench gave no thermal throttling. Soon as the race render started, power limit throttle turned on, dropping package TDP from 21 to an average of 11. As you can see, core dropped from 4.4 gigahertz to 3.4 gigahertz. And also the temperature that peaked at 72 degrees dropped to around 60 on average. Now the stress test with 100% CPU usage, multi-core frequency averaged at 2.2 gigahertz. It was fr dropped from 3.7 gigahertz to two gigahertz. There hasn't been any thermal throttling in this case and temperature averaged at 61 degrees. So the overall performance, thermal management, usability in this form factor, its battery, I'm going to say it's a stable machine for most professionals and students. It's coming for around $850. I'm going to drop the links in the description. And if you like what you see, just go hit that like and subscribe button. Put your comments down in the section below and I'll be seeing you soon with another video. Till again, Forest Tech signing out. I think we're signing out. I think we'll call this a wrap. Yeah, it's over. Cast can go, enjoy your meal, enjoy your tea or coffee or whatever it is that you want to enjoy. Just try and keep your distance, try and keep it safe. I'm gonna, guys, I'm gonna get back to some more reviews. First, I'm gonna just go fetch some lunch. See you guys later, chill.